Hello, and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy, episode number 125, the oversized, double-sized, foil, holographic variant cover, where one of us will die by the Damn end of this it, we're anniversary. we're not even 3D. Nah, that's, not that'll 3D. be for the reboot. That'll be for the reboot. No hollow foil? I said hologram. Well, hologram, hollow foil, close enough. But what die cut? It's, 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 uh, it's uh, somewhere in, you know... It's an episode that's uh, you know, divisible by 25, so therefore it must be a double-sized, giant, oversized. How many do you have Everything to... you know will change by the end of this episode. How many times do you have to listen to get the special incentive cover? A um, hundred times. You get the one in a hundred variant podcast where uh, we let Brock say a stupid saying at the end of the podcast, and I don't cut it out. Nice. So, yeah, so when's our annual episode? Well, when did we start the stupid thing? April? End of April? Is it April? No, you have to have the bonus episode, double length annual with a oh, completely the, different. Oh, annual. Yeah, I guess that would be that would be every time we have our anniversary episode, which we never remember. So well, there you go, one hundred twenty-five. How about it? Uh, I'm Ryan Higgins. Who's here with me this week? Brock Sager. Omar. Welcome back, Omar. Yeah, buddy. The uh, disembodied voice uh, you didn't just hear. Lord Hater. Okay. Lord Hater. That's apparently Toby. And Charlie. It's happening to people. Uh, very little to talk about this week as far as news crap, so we've got some questions, we've got some random stuff to talk about. Um, in the previous episodes of this podcast, I had been uh, pretty hard on, on Infinity, the you current were? Marvel event, if you guys are unaware of that. But I kept my word, and I said I would go back and reread it from the beginning paying maybe a little more extra attention to it than I Actually, have. you didn't keep your word. You're saying you were done with it. <laughs> no, but I told, I said, look, I will go back and reread it. I will go back, reread it, maybe pay a little more. Because, honestly, a lot of the times when I'm reading the stuff that I don't normally take home, I'm putting together bags of boards, I'm putting the comics in, I'm sorting stuff. I'm kind of reading it uh, talking to distracted. customers, you're talking to people on the internet. Yeah, a little bit. There's always a little bit of that going on. So if I'm ha- if I'm like going through this book and I'm like, I have no fucking idea what I've read, right? Mm-hmm. So there have been times where I've had to be like, look, I have to put this aside and reread this when I have more time to focus on it because it is a very dense story. So I did. Um, I, I read the first issue, or the first two issues plus, what was it, like 9 and 19 or something like that or 9 and 18 whatever the first two the, Avengers, yeah, Avengers and New Avengers yeah because in the back it has that little map of like one and then Avengers and New Avengers and then two and then Avengers and New Avengers like like I don't see how you can read Infinity without reading those you you have to I agree as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned you're right about that yeah they they are parts two and three of the story and then parts you know five and six um so we're basically the first four issues I'm gonna read two and then three and catch up uh and read the rest this week but it is better and makes more sense when I am paying a lot more attention to it, <laughs> which I will agree. It's still a lot of nonsense of a lot of characters that no one gives a crap about doing a lot of stuff that's just kind of like, eh, but I at least understand the plot having paid more than 50% of my attention to this book. So so for for all the people that are like, no, nah, I'm stupid. Well, yeah, yeah, I... Now that I'm actually reading it with slightly more uh, now focus. Now that you're reading it instead of just looking at the pretty pictures? Well, but you know, here's the thing. I can read like any Bendis book, like paying 25% attention to it and totally understand everything going in it, right? Because, I mean, they're, it's pr- they're pretty light. They're quick. You're reading. You get the idea. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, I'm going for yeah. quantity here, not quality, when I'm reading at the store, right? I can understand that. So I'm trying to pound out as many books as I possibly can. <clears throat> of the Avenger stuff, or, and especially with Infinity, I've just been like, this is this is impossible to read in my traditional kind of reading sense of, of how I'm reading these books. So it, I, I still think it is like – it's not a Marvel event, I think, is one of the biggest problems with it. it. It clearly is just an Avengers thing that is tying in with a few other books. Like it shouldn't even be a, a miniseries. It should be issues of Avengers. Like Like – I don't see it as separate from Avengers in any way, shape, or form. I fear itself and um, Forever Evil and Civil War and, you know, Identity Crisis. And if a lot of these big Marvel and DC events feel like, well, while there are connections back to the books, they're still, you know, you can read them just to some degree on their own. Infinity, I don't, I don't think is that way at all. I don't think if you've been reading Avengers and New Avengers from the start of Hickman's run, I, I don't think this would make a lot of sense. 
um, just especially the characters and plots and situations that are that arise in the book because they don't do a very good job of explaining what's happening. So but that's me. Hey, it's pretty cool that you know they have Ex Nihilo and Ex Nihila all in the same series. Like that's just like what comics is all about is making that <laughs> femme version, right? I still ha- I still hate. Ex Nilo. But the other Ex Nilo guy that kind of does like his ritualistic suicide and like suicides that planet, that's kind of cool. Like, there's, there's a couple kind of cool parts. So they're okay book. as long as they commit suicide? Is that what you're saying? Sure. Like, I don't like, I don't know what that guy's backstory is. Yeah. It's another Ex Nilo guy, but like, who, yeah. like, what's Ryan is deal? pretty much saying to himself, as long as they're listening to Joy Division as they die, <laughs> it's like, it's all good. <laughs> it's like, no, but, but, you know, he goes down to the planet and he, you know, all the stuff with Black Bolt and why the Inhumans matter and who the humans haven't been doing anything. Like, I still don't get any of that. But, but, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. If we get a Black Bolt. And his many wives book, then it'll all be worth it. <laughs> well, there's the Inhumanity book that's coming out, but that sounds like humans on Earth becoming inhumans. I don't, or in humans living with humans. I don't think it's about Black Bolt necessarily. I think it's less about the royal family and more about the people. I could be totally wrong about no, that. No, I, I, I agree. I think it's going to be like opposite of one nine eight. It's like you yeah, have yeah, all yeah, these yeah. mutants that died off with superpowers. Now you have humans that have powers that don't have responsibility. Right. That, that most humans. mutants have. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be sick. Yeah. So do I'm do the, do the Inhumans? Do they get multiple power sets, or is it just? Well, normally it's just the one power set. I'm, they, sure, they I'm sure they're the, the Terragon Terraginness. The Terragon, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and. They typically just sort of, I want to say evolve, because that's really what it comes down to, is they sort of change to be what might be considered a perfect version of themselves in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Or they might just go mad and become maximum. No. Yeah. Well, I think he's great, though. Yeah. Yeah, I like that they do bring back some, some older plots yeah. from the Inhumans, but because they, they've done so little with the Inhumans in the last... 15 years i mean well i liked everything they did with war of the kings and when they got involved in the galactic stuff but once they came back to earth they just said okay we'll park here on the moon again yeah i mean that was really it it was that in humans miniseries in like the late 90s um the, Usually like the war king Four, stuff right? but barely but barely yeah and then they had usually crystal yeah and, then they were in torch. with um what the heck is it they were in they were in um Besides working, they're in the Hickman Fantastic Four run, yeah, and that kind of resets them up here. Before that, I can't, I can't think of one major thing with the Inhumans. It's been so long, but eh, whatever. That's okay. what Black happens. Bolt just hangs out with the Illuminati whenever he can. Uh, yeah. You know, one thing I I do enjoy though is all the shine that uh is it Guardian? No, guard is it Guardian? The the X Men dude, the one with the Mohawk, the Shiar Captain, yeah. yeah. Oh, is that um, his name? Gladiator? Gladiator. 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 That's what I meant. Gladiator. Yeah. Yeah, that guy is sick. And, like, so he's, like, running things now for all of the Shi'ar? Like, it's not Lalandra? Because it seems like he's just, like, the shot caller now. Well, I thought he was just the at henchman. least right now he's, um, I don't know where things are at right now with the Shi'ar specifically, but in general, during wartime and whatnot, he always kind of had anonymity, only answering to the king or... Whoever was technically on the throne. I think Landra got... Didn't she get kind of written out or taken out a while ago? Wasn't she, well, they wasn't always she killed by... That. Wasn't she killed by a Darkhawk? She wasn't killed, was she? No, because she was referenced, so she's around. I don't think oh, she's dead. Oh, no, you are correct. Yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah she, she was. was yeah, she in, got in, killed by Darkhawks in... In War of the, in in War War of the Kings, Kings yeah. 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 And then Gladiator had to... The Gladiator took over being ruler eh. of the Shi'ar. The Whatever. Supremer, Supremer. How come I know that? Whatever, she'll be back. No, because you're the, you're the you're, space guy. You, you love the space shit. Yeah. That's why you like... Well, and, I, I mean, the Infinity stuff, I think the difficulty thing, especially if you're just reading Infinity, is, like, there's something going on with Thanos and the Inhumans, but there's also this stuff going on in space, and it's kind of like there's two huge stories that they're trying to tell. When Which is one normal. Is, it's just like Empire Strikes Back when... You have the space battle going on, and you have you know all the shit going well, on. Well, to me, the the in Cloud and City this goes to agree with Brock here. It's the same way you kind of get into those complaints with Fifty Two and that kind of stuff, where you have all these little threads that you kind of go, "These are the threads I'm really interested in," and you kind of have to read the rest of what's going on 
Like it's hard to just go, okay, I'm going to skip these couple of panels to get back to the, like, to me, these, when I think infinity, I don't think the space stuff. I think the Thanos storyline with the Inhumans, that's like, to me, what the event's really about. Mm-hmm. The rest of the stuff is just sort of a supplemental explanation of where your traditional well, Avengers are. Thanos even said it in the book, it's a distraction. Yeah. So all the stuff that's going on in space is just a distraction for what's yeah. going on, what he's doing and what's happening with the Inhumans. So it's... But I, I know what you're saying with the whole cross kind of the cross cutting from Return of the Jedi, where we get three different stories going on at the same time. But this doesn't do it well enough because there, there's too much separation. Well, I think the problem is, and just like going back to fifty two, is if you only care about one of the stories, you're kind of having to deal with the other stories going on. Well, it feels like an issue of Avengers and an issue of New Avengers sort of mashed into one. Yeah. Because they're taking plots from both of the books and mashing them into Infinity. Which, if you like those stories, you're going to be fine with it. If you were only really enjoying New Avengers, you're now kind of being forced to read the Avengers side of things. And then they brought in sort of the third story with Thanos because what's going on in New Avengers is still going on. And what's going on in Avengers has been so... I don't know. I guess this is my roundabout way of saying, yes, the main problem is is if you only care about the Thanos and human story, there's two other stories you kind of have to deal with in there. And if you only care about two of the stories, well, then you only have to deal with one extra story. Hopefully you care about all three because you'll get more enjoyment out of the book. Question for all those uh, Marvel historians, which is nobody probably on this podcast. Is this the first Define introduction? Historian. Is the first introduction <laughs> to Thanos's henchmen? This is totally new, right? This is new. Yeah, all this ground. Stuff is new. Yeah. It's all new ground. Yeah. Yeah, so for the most part, for me, I'm like I'm a big fan of like those. Yeah, you're dealing with one baddie, but then there's all these other baddies that yeah. come out into play, and it may, really challenges like the status quo, and it makes someone like Captain America just seem so much more punier than he already was. But then he comes through with like this cool tactic, like. I love that term that he had he, he had with a gladiator. He's like, oh, yeah, see, that's your problem. You're looking from the part of always having a winning hand. But for us, it's we're always, like, at a disadvantage or some bullshit. That was sick. Like, the writing there, the subtlety, showing how Captain America, he's, like, a total, like, strategist mm-hmm. and not just a tactician being on the field, throwing his shield around. So, that was that was cool. I haven't seen him in that in that view in a lot. I haven't seen him from that perspective vantage point in a long time. See, the one problem I can say with this event is at this point I can't remember what happened in what book so much, but I think it was in Avengers. Um, there was a scene where Captain America and the humans were trying to go in and talk to because they kind of had the council of the different ruling castes that make up that army. And they weren't going to listen to the humans until I, I'm trying to remember if it was the Cree or somebody pointed out that the humans had a better record repelling invasions than any of yeah, that was anybody cool. else. At okay. the, I'm like, that's very true. Regardless of how you feel about them, they seem to do better at war with these kind of things than anybody else in the galaxy. Yeah, then Spartax, I think. the What's his name's dad? Yeah. Well, you know, other galaxies haven't gotten the art of war yet, so... Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to some questions here. Um, let's see. What's up, Toby? I had one. I had one here. <clears throat> yeah. um, this comes from uh, Jonathan on Twitter. He says uh, he's kind of got two uh, got two questions here. Uh-oh. First is has D- you know, back in DC here has DC's editorial nonsense been affecting the sales of the books? He has another question after that, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, you know. Yes and no. <clears throat> Honestly, stuff like the crap with DC editorial means nothing to 95% of the people that read the books. No one goes on the internet. No one cares. No one reads your blogs. No one reads Bleeding Cool. No one. No one cares. No one listens to this podcast. Like, it really doesn't matter, right? To most people, nobody cares. I'll say most. M- most. Just stick with your 95% of people don't care. Yeah, 95% of people don't care. Nine, I'll give you 90. 90% so of people don't care. So you're saying 5% of the people are not savvy? I'll give, you five, I'll give you 5 or 10% of the people that buy comic books on a regular basis, go on Bleeding Cool, go on Twitter, go on the forums, go on Newsarama, go on comic book resources. 10%. 10%? 10%. 
the percentages may vary well, from area to area, but uh, it I may agree be with more Ryan. than ten. Okay, it may be more than ten percent. The amount of people that care, I'll give you ten percent. That will actually cancel a book. So, and you know, like Batwoman sales have fallen off in the J.H. William Mark, regardless of anything. Mm-hmm. No one signed up for it. I can think of maybe. I, I know I had at least one person that told me they want to drop Batwoman. It's less to do with the stuff happening with J.H. Williams and more to do with because J.H. Williams is no longer on the book. If he had left by himself, this guy still would. I know he still, he said he still would have dropped it anyway. So I'm trying to think if I've had anyone actually drop Batwoman because of this other than him. And I can't think of anyone. Of course, that's, you know, just, just us. I would raise my hand in saying that. I'm gonna probably stop reading Batwoman because we're gonna we're not gonna have J.H. Williams right. uh, his plotting because he though he hasn't been the artist for a long time. Yeah, I think that um, his fill-in artist. I'm trying to think of his name. He's had a couple. There's been a couple guys on. Well, on he Batman. obviously had an influence on their style because the the Batwoman Blackham, Blackman. No, Blackman's the writer, co-writer. He's a yeah. co-writer. McCarthy. McCarthy, yeah, Trevor McCarthy, who's incredible. I think he's done a fantastic job well, the last six he, issues. He's done it. I mean, some of the backup artists have done a good job kind of using J.H. Williams' style, so where there's a little more, you know, the flow to the page. Not necessarily as good as Williams, but like you said, I mean, it still brings – the art is still good in the book. I think without without either a Rucka or uh, a Williams – that know the essence of the character and the storytelling just because she's making out with another woman. That's not, that's not like engaging enough for me to fucking read the story. Well, to me, all that, it, all that these kind of changes really affect is I'm not jumping off Batwoman, but after I read the first issue of his crap now, obviously that's oh. going to affect sales. Well, I've had one person jump on because Mark Andreco is taking over. So huh. there you go. So it's a wash for you. It is kind of a wash. Yeah. It, it, that's why I call some of this stuff sort of like fake controversy because no one really cares. But the thing about it is, though, it's a, it is an influencer. I agree with your point that the majority of comic readers are not don't really give a fuck about what the internet's saying because they have their own well, feel about what things happening. But the the populace, the reason why you know I fanboy and comics clients went out of business is for that same reason is is such a low readership, such a low return on investment for people that say AOL. Or graphically, or whoever else owned yeah, Icon Com- Boy. Comics Alliance is back for the for the time being. We'll see how long that lasts. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And and yeah. where's their talent? Their talent it's it's not the same level of writers they that used to be there. Talent. Well, I would say Com- that they Comic did. Comic Alliance. That's uh, funny. Well, I, I mean, okay, talent doesn't necessarily transcribe directly to writing and how well they do it. But for people to be engaged with them, there was like three personalities that they had a huge no, following. They had some personalities, all right. Yeah. I so. hate Comic Alliance. No, I think you hate, hate. Comic Speed. Comic Speed, you're worse. I hate you're... Comic Speed too, but I hate Comics Alliance. Oh no! Oh my god! No. But you know, here's the thing. David Brothers is the shit. I love, I love oh, his geez. writing. He influenced me a lot. Oh, I like him. God. Yeah. Ugh. I, I can't stand that guy. Um, is it just because so... he's Wakandian? <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, so I guess back to answer the question. I think the only way to really say if editorial actually affects sales is three months after one of these shifts to see when people are reading the book, if the shift in feel or whatnot is enough to cause people to drop it. I would actually, I'm totally going back to Comics Alliance and why I hate these guys so much <laughs> and, and, and a little bit on comic speed and stuff like that. And this, this is, I rage about this on Twitter all the time he and I'm going to rage about, about it right here. You rage about store. everything. Here's the thing with, with those sites. They have no actual knowledge of the retail and um, actual uh, business end of comics, yet comment on it like they're involved. There's two of them that work for comic shops. Mm. Or have. Not to say they're you. Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know. Because no one's a Ryan Higgins. There's a, there's a, Ryan Higgins was, there's only obviously, one. there's only run Ryan Higgins. Only He's like baby. the Highlander. There's there can only, only be one. Only but, one you know, Ryan Higgins is the <laughs> only one that's, yeah. like, brought up on, but I don't know how many websites. But it's not Because just, he's nonpartisan slash DC but only. It's, but it's not just working in a store. I mean, I mean, they straight up claim things that are 100% disproven by looking at sales figures but you know what no one believe no one believes that they're wrong because they have the ability they're behind AOL they're backed by AOL at the time they were and 
they are they were at the time one of the top five yeah. comics blocks. Yeah. You know, I totally so you're basically you saying because nobody believes they're wrong, they must be right. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you know what? That's the, that's why that's why we had the bushes in office for how many comics years? alliance. That's people, why. <laughs> here's the thing: comics alliance oh, tells boy. comics alliance tells people that wouldn't buy Batwoman anyway why they shouldn't buy Batwoman. That's it. that is like they wouldn't buy it. Anyway, okay. So, what do you think about Mary Sue then? Since they're one of oh, the bigger sites. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> no, no. don't lose, don't any, lose out on our female sites any, now, bro. Any, any of these Come sites, on. any site with such a clear uh, bias going in on any subject, it doesn't matter. Uh, like DC women kicking ass, they're so jaded and so angry that nothing is right in these people's minds. That that every no, you know who's right? Gail Simone is right. Yes, mine is generally right. Yeah. Anything that is You guys agree then. Put through You guys agreed. You and Mary Sue have agreed Gail Simone is right. Gail Simone <laughs> like look, Gail Simone like Kirk, going, going. Gail Simone like Kurt Busiek and a few other people in the comics industry definitely are like, look, I'm in the industry. I am aware of the facts. You know, while yes, there are some dumb stuff, however, this is obviously not intentional or some of this is maybe it is maybe just some of it meant i don't know but but uh, these guys have been around the block for a while they they know they you know they know how to play ball you know you know what i mean you can be nice to your to your bosses and disagree with them at the same time right there's, there's, there's an easy way to do, I do it. it almost every day yeah guy's an asshole I so i hate those sites oh my god like i went to i went to comics beat and just I, I out of the blue, I went there for, to, to look at something, and I got, I saw just the worst. Okay, if I am biased against DC, then 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 these guys are are like the Fox News of me, right? It's like they're the exact opposite. It's the craziest thing, and then like it's it's so trolly that I I guess I'm well, so trolly no, I mean, too. It, but AOL obviously had ties to Disney, so I you're right? No, Warner Brothers, huh? Was it yeah, AOL? Yeah, AOL Time Warner, yeah. It didn't seem like maybe that. that's no, why they dropped. Maybe that's why they dropped them. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. There you go. I don't know. Anyway, well, those I sites mean, are terrible and dumb. I mean, them. a lot of the, like I, you've linked. I've seen a couple of sites off of these. I mean, I don't go to them personally unless it's linked and something. That but half Mark time, Oliver Frisch on Comics Beat. You know, you know this excellent site. It's called ConspirativeBrock dot com. <laughs> no, <I can't>. um, <laughs> but like a lot of the stuff, like you would link me to. Half of it, I'd be like, "Why am I even reading this garbage?" Because it's it's all it is is going for hit page hits. It's mm-hmm. not it's not anything driving content. It's not anything trying to give but, well, quality welcome to information. Yahoo News, right, welcome but, but, to Fox News, you know, yeah, welcome say, to Omar. Can tell you that's how it is done. Mm-hmm. It doesn't yeah. matter what you're saying. It doesn't. It doesn't stuff. matter. It's all <laughs> right. about writing in your fucking uh, you know, your code behind what you're writing, doing fucking teenies getting effed in the butt like you know that because the hashtags is all about getting the driving the shit to the site mm-hmm. and that's all it matters because then that's what you can use to leverage you know advertising dollars or yeah. anything for your site yeah it's sad so no I, mean, I guarantee you if you look at most of the code behind a lot of very prestigious sites including fox news because they're prestigious <laughs> yeah, according to according to my far. homeboy ebs i wouldn't go um, that far you know, you'll see like adult porn, you know, sure. teeny porn, all that kind of shit. All you'll see all of those hashtags in there embedded. But but what I'm saying is that you know, accurately reporting the news, whether it's Fox News or comic book news, is not good for clicks, right? Is not good for hits. You want the most outrageous, sensational mm. point of view. And in the comics industry, which is such a small, I mean, you're talking hundreds of people for right? comic comic books, but not for movies. No, for comic books. So you're talking a dozen sites, and let's be honest, three quarters of those dozen sites every day are posting about movies and video games and not comic books, right? There's really a dozen sites out there that get any sort of traction, and the only thing, you know, whether it's Bleeding Cool or Mary Sue or whether it's you know, Comic Speed or Comics Alliance or any of these guys, you know, it is in their best interest to post the most ridiculous, sensational clickbait garbage of all time. Of course, and make, that's what makes and the that's, money. That's why you don't and like it. Con- that's and- why you don't like the blogs. Right. But when it all comes down to it, it's all about the mass media. It's right. all about like Loki. He's like an overnight sensation. There's Loki. Maybe like twenty people have made like hundreds and thousands of dollars off Loki shirts just because of fucking Middleton. And Middleton's not seeing a fucking percentage of it because. It's done in a way on go, the web. Go on Tumblr and Etsy. Yeah, exactly. And 
dude, they're selling these shirts for like fucking thirty dollars, and they're making they're spending five dollars to have them made. It just based off, based off one graphic, and he's not getting he's not seeing shit on it. Neither is Marvel. I saw so much on Toby. I think Toby saw it when we were yes. at Anime. All the Loki uh, yes. Yaoi. Uh, and yeah, I of course. This last year. Yeah, him yeah, and yeah, Thor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. But it's cool though. I'm mean, because at the same time, I love that the masses are a part of you know our cool little sandbox. Well, but I mean, the masses don't care that Batwoman's not getting married. Like no one, like like the people bitching about it don't read the books anyway. But you know, it doesn't matter really because if they do, it talk about it, then it matters. Right. And anyway, I, I like it. I hear it. Let's, let's, like, cool. let's move on. Let's move on before I get any more trouble with a bunch of blogs. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> you gotta get a lot of hate. He's gonna get banned. So Fuck Ryan hate. Higgins from yeah. Comic Conspiracy and Sunnywell. Let's shut him down. Let's all <laughs> F Sunnywell while we're at it. Oh, I think well, they all know. They all know. I, I've, I've, I've been. Yeah, they all know. Trust me. Um, <laughs> Jonathan, no, no, you would know your name, dude. Yeah. Jonathan. Jonathan also asks, "What happened to Jupiter's legacy?" The book's coming out. I don't know. Third issue, fourth issue comes out this week. It's on a it's on a there. time delay. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like every other month. Yeah, I, I don't think it's monthly. I think it's every other month. So it's coming out on a regular, uh, regular irregular. Basis. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I ever read the second issue. <laughs> the the Millar, Are you talking about the Millar book? Yeah. I, I dude, I only read. Like, I think maybe number is it number three right now. It's on. I think three or four is coming out next. Three week. is coming out. Only two issues. Only are coming only out. two issues have come. You're right. Only two. <laughs> I fuck, think it's yeah, where is that? I think it's Thank bi-monthly. you, Jonathan, for the reminder. Because fuck, I, I really like that book. I think it's bi-monthly. It's fun. It gets stuck in customs. Uh, Does it? Probably. <laughs> I right. don't know, but the idea of that getting stuck in customs is quite amusing. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, our boy Stefano here has got a question. He says, how do you guys go about liquidating your comics once the time has come to leave your long boxes and find new homes? Brock's been doing a lot of that. Yeah. Um, well, recently with like the New 52 stuff, it's if a s- series gets canceled... Uh, like Demon Knights, I just and that's something I was getting. I just put it up on eBay um, with my older stuff. It, it you just get to the point where you either don't give a shit or you're like, eh, well that's gonna get me some money, so I'll just sell it anyway. I tell everyone you can sell it at the stores, but honestly, if you just put stuff on eBay, yeah, you can get a couple fifty cents a book, buck a book, maybe more if you're lucky. I I mean I when I put my stuff up, I normally try and do like the lowest is like seventy five cents a dollar, and then I'll bump it up to like two bucks as a buy it now if it's a full set i mean it some stuff sells some is, stuff doesn't is that per book yeah yeah because i'm a i'm a start at 99 cents or 9.99 or whatever straight auction no no high bid no just well you have a store i only have go. 50 free listings so. <laughs> another way to do it store. um stefano is if you have a full run of books is do like 10 at a time like one through 10 yeah. of birds of prey um, the original version that came out like in the 90s and then like do 11 through, you know, 20. And then it becomes a, really a competition between some people that may want to compete for, you know, getting that. And because whenever you do, the, the more books you do, the less advantage you have because people are going to always look at the shipping, especially for comic books, I think. To me, the selling comics on eBay are a double-edged sword because if you're trying to sell particular issues, grading becomes really important. And if you say it's near mint and it's not somebody's idea True. of near mint, yeah. it it becomes a headache and a half to deal yeah. with that kind of thing. But what do you do? And in, in, what do you write? What do you write up, Charlie? I'm curious. Well, I, I tend to not even necessarily claim like for single issues. If it's something that I really just don't want to deal with, I'll just, bring it in here to the shop and tell here i and make these vanish for me <laughs> okay. um but for a lot of stuff that i, I have them. sort of turned around and sold i've i've always sort of avoided doing direct grading and pretty much say look i'm not qualified to tell you thank exactly you. the grading thank you thank you you saying that versus because I, I used to do this where i would say oh yeah it's a normal book oh very fine but i'm not a professional yeah. grader what charlie said saying that you know look I'm not a professional grader. This is not what it's about. I've read this maybe once or twice. It's a good. It's a. It's it's a book in great condition. And I've only and I, I'm in a pet free home and it's smoke free. Yeah. You write those things. It's going to totally up your um your yeah, dollar I mean, value that you get on your bid. I mean, for me, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't do specifics. I just kind of do a blanket. So if it's if it's something like I read once, I put it in a sleeve and it's never. It's red. It's like near mint mint. That, I, I put that label. If it's something that's been, I've had it for a little while. It drops to you know very fine near mint. Like I, yeah. I kind of give myself a little bit of a of a leeway, and then. Well, I find in 
in doing lots like you normally do mm. is less important because it doesn't become about this one book that you yeah. want to like it's really about somebody looking to read it at that sure. point which sure. helps yeah um but yeah i just i don't know I, i've heard stories and experienced a couple of times where somebody's like well there was like there's literally products I've purchased at um, cons, like action figures and that kind of stuff, that every single one they handed out was a little bent at the top or something just sure. because of how they were packaged. Sure. And sure. I put up pictures, I do everything, and I still get the guy who's like, oh, well, the boxes are... I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah, it sucks. I didn't say, this is perfect and... Bl-. Yeah. But the thing about it is you protect yourself, like you yeah. said, in your writing, and yeah. you just always put that version, that, that little other text where in the shipping description, for multiple purchases, we can talk about um, specific detail. You can, you can do, you can do specific, like combined uh, shipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so, and that's what, that, that enough, that, that's enough for some people to, um, you know, overbid uh, on some things that yeah. they probably shouldn't, well, just to get, just to get more, funny. more books. I, I the amount of times I've posted a lot of multiple auctions and somebody's bought all of them and I'll say in there, willing to do combined shipping, blah, blah, blah. They just send me all the money for all the shipping separately. <laughs> yeah, some people don't even know. Everyone, just, for yeah. me, it's different. For me, yeah. they like say, oh, is there any other slower shipping that's available? Can yeah. I pay like only this? I get like, that a lot. I get that from like yeah. two or three people that are regular. They regularly see what I put on uh, eBay. So when, Be toys when or I'm doing a little bit of shipping at work, we have all sorts of weird shipping stuff. And the only thing that really annoys me because we shipping internationally is a pain in the ass. Agreed. Especially, especially until, when they ask you how much it is. You're like, fuck. Well, they ask me how much it is. I get a quote and they're like, well, I just want to ship the cheapest method. I'm like, that's not what I offer. Do you, well, have you ever asked them? Well, I'm the, sorry for interrupting. Really quick. No, yeah, yeah, no, go, go, no, go, no, no. You jumped on it first. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say the problem is um, recently, especially in the U.S., uh, anything over, I believe, two pounds or three pounds, I can't remember what it is, must be shipped priority, mm. which means in most places, Europe, it's going to be $60 to yeah, ship anything. Sure. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Asia is like 30 to 40. Yeah, if it's over, um, if it's over uh, priority shipping USPS is like fifty nine ninety nine to most South American and yeah. European countries. Canada, Japan, China, England, a little bit different. Yeah. But a, most like a flat of the sixty bucks or fifty nine ninety nine fifty nine ninety five and up or just no, flat. for for flat rate priority box. I, I just I the only reason I get annoyed is I <coughs> eBay in general, and this is something you have to realize if you're selling on eBay, puts a pretty much all the power in the person buying its hand. I agree. Meaning I agree. You get completely. screwed. Screwed. I do not leave feedback as no, a seller. You don't get you don't get completely screwed because if you have so many transactions as both of you guys probably have, and it's a hundred percent feedback, then eBay will be on your side because they'll know that you have done this much business, and they yeah. know that this person is probably whack. The other question, going back, leading back to the international transactions, what I usually say is, "Hey, do you have a friend in? Uh, do you have a friend in you know <laughs> U.S.? Oh, you do. Great." Well, let's make it easier for both of us, and let me send it to that person, and he can send it to you. Boom. And usually they agree to that. I've had that come up a couple of times, especially after I quoted shipping. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, also back to going back to what you said about what you should list, I also find that the minimalist that you are is better. Because I've gone to sites and looked at that long, this flashy description crap. It's all over the place. I'm like, no, just what is it? What's the condition? You know, give them, like you said, smoke-free environment, pet-free environment. Like, those little things. You don't need this laundry list of the second page has a kind of, you know, you don't need that. Definitely not. So Especially if it's, it's not like, if, keep it as simple if it's as CGC, you have to have all that. But if it's not, then you're good to go. Yeah. Hmm. Well, CGC makes it easy. Yeah, CGC, pretty much, you just have to go, here, it's graded. Yeah. This is their yeah. info they gave you. No, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> and it's going to come to you in a medium-sized, tall priority box. That's Let's talk about something that Toby would like to talk about. Besides all, it's this. coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming really soon. I got one question from Ang. This is one more that's a bit a uh, bit on the kind of technical retailer side, I guess, a little bit. Um, he says, "How do you preserve comics from going yellow?" Uh, I'm sure you mentioned protecting comics, but I'm not sure about yellowing. Um, see so if you're talking about grading comics and everything like that. 
Um, the yellowing of a comic is what's called oxidiz- oxidization, which can happen to any sort of paper. Um, very, very common with comic books and especially very common with old comic books. Um, you can't do anything about it. Oxygen will get to these comic books. The best to do, put it in a bagging board. Absolutely worst case, get it graded, get it uh, sealed uh, by CGC, put it in Tupperware. Those are your kind of your only options, but even Tupperware is not the best. So uh, there's not really a way. I mean, new comics won't get yellow. These, this, this paper won't. Unless it's like, I don't know. I don't even know how this would. Because this is like coated, weird, plastic paper. Old comics, they're going to be yellow. There's nothing you can do about it. So This is me just going, well, we'll see if these get yellow. Yeah. 30, 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be something like it fades funny or... No, no, no. It will like break down over time. Yeah. And- <laughs> All right, I got a question for Toby. I know exactly what the answer is already. But he can tell me what his answer is. Toby, who's your favorite sidekick? What? Who's your favorite sidekick? This comes from Jeff. Nightwing? Of course it's Nightwing. Is Nightwing Was your favorite that even sidekick? a question? Yeah. Who's your favorite sidekick? To all of us or just me specifically? Well, to all of us, but I'll ask you first. Oh, yeah. We already know that one. Of course it's Nightwing. Yes. Charlie, who's your favorite sidekick? Do you get one? Well, I am definitely partial to Nightwing, but I'm trying to come up with another. It's mine. <laughs> Stay away, Charlie. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> mine. There's, there's a limited amount of sidekicks out there, unfortunately, to really choose from. There's really not that many. Like, sidekicks didn't go very far in comic books. There's only a handful of ones that lasted more than, you know. Fine. I'm going to go with Hope. Okay. She can be cable sidekick. Sure. Damn it. Sure. She's the, one of the best sidekicks ever in Hero Clicks. In Jub- Hero Clicks, one of the best ever. Is Jubilee uh, like Wolverine sidekick? Yes. Or, For or, this purpose, like, we are definitely saying or yes. Sh- or Shadow that's Cat. Like, that's like Shadow Cat, yeah. Armor. Yeah, yeah come on. Yeah. I like Armor. It, it opens it up. I like Armor woman. a lot. I really like Armor. Uh, I would have to go with Bucky Winter Soldier for Cap. Yeah, we know it's That's for his Cap. Official it's name, a comic book Winter Soldier podcast. Oh, of course, Wally the uh, for you, Wally West. Of course, yeah. that's your favorite. Yeah, no question. Although, unless you want to give me, uh, unless you want to give Kyle me, Rayner, uh, uh, I, I'm not. Kyle's okay. Kyle's I like not Kyle. A I like Kyle. Not I want to to Hall. But maybe no. if you want to give me like um, uh, Bedig. No, is it Bedig? Badge. Badge. Ba- badge. My ass. Badge. It's Bedig. Is it Bedig? No, it's Badge. But it's Badge. Stupid. No, honestly, let's be honest. It's not really Badge. It's not Badge. Badge is all. not the sidekick. I think, what's his name is the sidekick? Yeah, Baz. Baz. <laughs> Baz. 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 Baz is Badge's sidekick. Right? He's like, oh, this fucking little raccoon is teaching me the ropes. Oh, yeah. Dude, that was incredible. I yeah, love that storyline. Really yeah. It was so playful, but yeah. like, I don't, yeah. people didn't get it. No, Wally. Wally's my sidekick. He's the best. For me, yeah, you guys said it. Uh, Sprite, Shadow Cat, Kitty Pride. She's All my favorite. She's just like, for me, again, it goes back to my childhood and it's always been based on X Men. So and I'm always going to have a place in my heart for her. It's seeing how she, grow, she grew. She was like, this, like, oh, this unaware teen coming in, falling in love with this big old <laughs> Russian dude. And, you know, she had these cool powers, but she actually Wait. was a smart girl. But she was like, uh, unaware of everything. And she's like, all at Emma Frost, just because she's Emma Frost is fucking hot. I have the fuck of that Ooh. shit. And, Do you, you know. think we're actually coming to a Marvel, a point in Marvel where they're, where they're getting the the need to sort of New Fifty Two their books? Because especially in the X Men yeah. stuff now, like, Kitty Pride is twenty five five years ago. We should have done that, or when when New Fifty Two happened, Kitty Marvel Pride, really needed Kitty it, not Pride DC. Is, Kitty Pride is a perfect example of a character, though, that when they introduced her, she was. 16 yeah i want to mm-hmm. say maybe um, younger I, I, that suitcase? I, I have some recollection of them saying 13 but that sounds way too young because she was going through 16. like shit she's going through puberty and they're talking about that so maybe 13 yeah she's 28 at the youngest right now the way they portray her in their x-men yeah. books i, I can't, like <clears throat> you know we're, we're i i think marvel is getting to the dc point of yeah, your 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 Cyclopses and your Tony Starks are in their forties at this point, or pushing forties. I like Cyclops as a villain. I'm sorry, he's not a villain at all. He's he's barely barely a villain. I want him to be a villain. How about that? I like I like the Uncanny X Men book, but he is no more villainous in that book than him and Emma Frost have been in the last <laughs> ten years of X Men. He's exactly the same. He's just not hanging out with Wolverine. Like that's all it is. The, all that the makes kids. You bad. <laughs> yeah, that's no, pretty funny. Let's be honest. Okay, so it's a, it's a graphic art. We're talking about comics. It's not just about the words. It's about the pictures. 
that X across his face, that shit is villainous. Yeah, sure. He looks like um, looks like uh, what's his face from uh, from Speed Racer. But yeah, no, yeah, he always looked like him. Did I tell you that when X Men the Cartoon first showed up in Europe, that they played the two Sentinel episodes, and then that's the same way they did in the U.S. Oh, is it? And then they switched it to Speed Racer. Huh. Now that day, I came or I had to go somewhere Saturday morning. I came back and it was Speed Racer about halfway through, and I was watching it and fucking Racer X kid coming on, you know, with the X on his freaking the helmet or whatever it was and the, the Cyclops visor and I was like the fuck is Cyclops doing he keeps driving that stupid fucking car where are the rest of the X-Men what's happening <laughs> this is really confusing All right. I wish I was there to just dude that, that was you, very bro. confused I wish I was right. there for you alright <laughs> this one's from uh, David who asks uh, I think it's a some easy answers here, but we'll give them. Um, what is the best follow up for a new reader of the comics who liked Why the Last Man and wants more like it do we answer this? Do, I, do we answer something really similar to this, like a few so. weeks ago? I think that was Mitchell's answer. question with Preacher. It was that, but no, there was someone specifically asking about Brian K. Vaughn, I think. And the, I, or Ooh. maybe it was Why the Last Man. And the answer is just read more stuff by Brian K. Vaughn. Yeah. Cause really, There's one about lions. Hmm? Pride of Baghdad? Yeah. yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, at this point, Brian K. Vaughn has put up enough of a, a, a readership of books that a readership of books, a collection of books that that if you're interested in reading just his stuff, there's, there's a lot to read. Yeah. There's uh, Ex Machina, which is kind of like a political yeah. superhero thriller. That was um, going to be my suggestion. Which they're actually uh, recollecting right now, so it may be hard to find some of the thin, small trades. But they're doing like those bigger, fat, oh, like yeah, that's twelve because issue. They did the hard covers, and now they're doing trade versions of the hard. Covers. Right, right, right. So those are just coming out. Um, Runaways, which are not all in print right now for Marvel, but Marvel has to be reprinting that. Uh, saga, because it's awesome. obviously, Saga, which sure, has yeah. of two, course, Saga. Two that's obvious. Saga, the number one independent comic of all time right now, or the, the number staple. Not, not, not of all time. I'm sorry, the number one independent comic yeah. right now. Yeah. The, the, mo- the number one independent would be Walking Dead, and I still think that there's a connection to the way Brian K. Vaughn tells stories because about society. I think that Walking Dead would be uh, all time. Walking Dead's all time, right? Uh, no, I mean, shit like Spawn and Wildcats and all that also, oh, okay. all that, you know, TMNT That's not fair, and stuff. Though. Yeah, but yeah. modern, mo- you know, 1995 to current, yeah, I would say Walking Dead. Yeah, like, I mean, what, well, what, like, Ryan, let's be honest, what books have made you the most money independent books? Sure, when you count in trade paperbacks, the the physical money brought in by Walking Dead is... Yeah. It, outpaces probably any, almost any comic book ever. And uh, graded I mean, sing- single, and single, single issues, probably? Oh, yeah. yeah. Single issues? I mean, you know, it's crazy. That's the model. That's you why know, people are... pay for a house with that. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But you know, Almost. Yeah, yeah. you know what's crazy is that There's I think Walking Dead that. has these kind of numbers even without the TV show, I think. Even if the TV show never came, no, I still it, think Walking Dead was huge. It was huge before it was the huge, TV show. It was huge, but the TV show, again, the yeah, yeah. But it, it, was, it was a pretty big beast up before the TV show yeah, already. It was, it was a respectable indie Because I remember being at the shop. Sold, like, regularly... Volume ones mm. and that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, but even but the TV show took that to extremes. It went no, from absolutely, selling. but I, I still think that was a beast before him because I remember it was, recommended yeah. it so many people like when it was like a, a volume eight or something, and yeah. they would come back like uh, the next day and buy the next two. They would come back and buy the next three, and mm. they would yeah. catch up like crazy. Yeah, I don't see it like you do. I'm not well, in the shop every day, like huh. you know, yeah. not every day, but you know, as much as you are. Well, nope. it's just my experience pre before the TV show is yes, you could sell a couple of copies of the volume one every week pretty consistently, but after the TV show, it just oh yeah, definitely you cut start a doing by. But how many other image titles were you selling like graphic novel wise? Zero like, every 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 week or every other week Zero. exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, Walking Dead is definitely on a level of its own, and the TV show made it even crazy higher. You know, it's, <coughs> was there was there more you, news? Do you feel like it's leveled off now at this point? Like, um, the single issues have have leveled off since around issue one hundred. The trade sales for us have slowed down pretty significantly. I think it's a two part. One, you've sort of hit your max audience, okay. right? Yeah. Everyone that's going to be into it is into it at this point because you're three seasons into the show now. Yeah. Um, and then, but we're also once the series picks back up, when season four comes back mm-hmm. on, I'll be curious if we get another burst because we have every year the series starts up, we get a burst. Yeah. You know, October, November, yeah. December. Well, I, I'm just curious: do you get a burst of people buying the trades that have come out since it was on last, or do you get a burst of new people buying? Still a burst of number ones. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, number one will 
still be in our top selling trade of the year, one of our top selling trades. I'm an abuser of Barnes and Nobles and going <laughs> into the shop every once in a while and buying a coffee and then getting a compendium and reading it. <laughs> I see a lot of people walking out with a compendium, and the compendium is usually sold out mm-hmm. at uh, Barnes and Noble. We sell those well. They sell well, yeah. Especially since number two came out, I think it's kind of like people have been waiting for number two to come out so that they can have number one and number two together at well, the same time. Well, those compendiums are a very good price for page big count. time. Yeah. It's huge, very, right? Very good. Yeah. The it's only, like what? The, like, only, the only problem is, is they come out every what three years? Uh, four years. Because eight issues, eight volumes. Oh, yeah, but right. they're gonna wrap ramp that up a little bit because they're double shipping uh, through this next. Yeah, I basically, think we're, like we're two need, trades. We're getting so. three trades this next year. Yeah. yeah. Has there three been any four. more? Has there been any more news on um, what is what this new uh, the spinoff spinoff is going to no, be about? No, no, no idea. Yeah, do you think I, they'll do it based off the video game since it was a big it was a big flop. hit? It was, uh, it was a flop, really. One of, what? One of them was. It depends yeah. on which video game yeah. you're talking about. No, not the video. shooter. No, yeah. the the adventure game yeah. was a huge, huge hit for them. Yeah, yeah. huge. Hit. I, I was talking to somebody about it. I think if they did, if they did the spinoff show like they did with the the Bicycle Girl episode, those little episodes that they put in season two, right, where they told the story of Bicycle Girl, how she came to be where she was. Yeah. Um, I think if they take that spinoff show and make it kind of individual stories like each uh, like episode is about like somebody in that world or something happening to people in that world not necessarily connected to the show but maybe just connected to the world all i know is that that fucking the action shooter the action <laughs> uh video game it was like it was the biggest winner of the video games like in the last year and shit yeah the, the, the adventure game. the adventure game yeah and, yeah and the telltale yeah, yeah. telltale yeah. games yeah to go yeah. off that but they did like one with Daryl and Merle that tanked. Um, that's the, but that that's the shooter game. Yeah, that's the. Unquote, but the, let's say survival something. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. But any event, yes, their Telltale Walking Dead game was a huge success. But they've done a couple now that weren't. So, yeah. all right, got a uh, our guy Cross X Hunter uh, ask us a question here. Um, he asks, "Am I still wrong about disliking Where the Batman?" Um, I have not seen enough episodes. Again, I haven't watched it in. At this point, months, I got like seven or eight of them on my TiVo to watch. So um, I haven't heard much about it. I don't know. What, what's, what's the question? If he is wrong? Is no, if I, wrong am, am I wrong? Am I wrong? For liking am it? I continu- for disliking do I continue it? being wrong for disliking if it? If you continually watch it, the answer, uh, Cross X Hunter. Does it get better? What's up, buddy? Um, Ryan initially started with not liking Green Lantern. I did. Animated totally. series. <laughs> totally. And then he loved it. And oh, then yeah. he was mad because it ended. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I don't think, think the they're end- going to end. I don't think they're going to end with viewer. I mean, it's a lower budget. You can see it in the animation. But when I you think Green Lantern, right? The animation got better. The stories yeah. got better. The plots yeah. got better because it was rough when it started. I'm well, into. I'm into the Katana Batman dynamic. <laughs> I think it's fucking sick. Definitely, they need to work out on her costume. Right now, where it's at, I think that she's just wearing some mask, which is bullshit. Like mm-hmm. the nothing else. Person. Yeah, it's nothing. It's just like fucking the same black suit with a fucking mask over. She's oh, like okay. Catwoman. All right, all right. It's dumb. Anyways, I like Alfred, seeing him as like this military, kind of still youthful vital- vitality. He's still probably, you know, getting some pussy. You know, it's awesome. I love it. This is a kid show. Okay. What's so, a kid show? This is a kid show? I don't think this is a kid show. Yeah, beware the Batman. Yeah. No, no, no show with Professor Pig in it is a kid show. Yeah, exactly. I guess my general answer to liking or disliking Beware the Batman is I still like it. I'm not in any rush to like be like, I need to buy this. When, like, and that's kind of weird for me on a dc property because i own most of the animated dc stuff what's up warner brothers where's our um brave and the bold blu-rays yeah they, they said the warner archives they like they had an ad for that months ago and it never showed up yeah. in the store i keep checking yeah me too never seen it when is war coming out by the way what is it next year oh just league war 2014 yeah, it's every 2014. two they're every uh, six months so it should be huh. well, January, maybe February. It's not necessarily. Every but that's we have to wait that long for another DC animated movie. They're like, they're like two a year, two or three years. Well, they're two a year, but they tend to release one and then three months later release the other, and then yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. long break. Yeah. I just feel like it's yeah, it's been a long break. Yeah. I guess we're in the long break zone right now. Yeah, yeah. They just re-released the. They um, should get that out before Batman Christmas. Hey, can we do the a little two, pre-talk? The, the pre-talk two. about next week because I know I know next week we're talking about uh, next week my we have pick, a lot right? to talk about. Next week we're talking about my pick, right? What's your pick? Oh well, your, your comments. Earth two. Okay. Yeah. There's two picks in the month. No, no Earth, Earth two. two. Well, that was your, your pick, pick right? Yes, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, Earth two. Yeah. Yes. No, why are you having such a weird 
uh, well, hold on, confused hold on. face. Hold right on. Now. Cross uh, one one more question specifically. Well, no, I, let me answer that one too. Oh, okay, go ahead. Still not watching it because I'm still <laughs> standing by my own Young Justice uh, okay. boycott. Okay, well, he's got one more question for you, and then then nothing as good we'll, as Young we'll Justice. You. It was too doesn't matter. I'm I, I'm standing by my. They shouldn't was, have canceled yeah, it. They shouldn't have. This is for Toby. At but the same uh, time, I'm standing up for Green Lantern. I don't know why, but I'm okay. standing up for it. But this is for Toby, but also for Charlie. Um, are you disappointed with Korra season two so far? A little the fuck is wrong with you little, who has that little uh who uh, asked that is, well, i want cross. his name cross it's cross x hunter do you wrong what, what's wrong about that i don't know He's, well he should be more specific he just asked he, he, maybe he's starting fights do you like it <laughs> maybe, maybe you should meet me outside i'll teach him a few things no, okay. <laughs> toby only has 140 characters oh, that's true it's true maybe you should go over to tumblr he kind of asked me that <laughs> Uh, wait, is, 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 is it the, the question again? He said, Are what's wrong? Disappointed? No, I'm not. I love it. And I think it's awesome. I like the new direction they're going. I think it's fresh, uh, except for maybe the bad guy feels a little similar to the, the season one bad guy, but I'm hoping that that's not the case. You don't know yet. But this I mean, time it's family. No. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know, I mean, it's, uh, what, what's his name? The uncle? I don't, I don't even know, know his name, but the guy from the North from Water tri- uh, Tribe, yeah. uh, he, he he seems a little too familiar to uh, the the center the guy in season one, I think, a little bit. That's both in interesting, actually, both in visuals and in in the way he acts. But I'm hoping that that's not the case. Hoping that he needs a cool name. Yeah, but the the writers are smart enough not to make that hopefully the case. But yeah. otherwise, other other than that, I really like the show. I mean. What's not to like? I mean, I like the. It's fresh. It's they're not doing the same things that they did in Avatar: The Last Airbender. They're going different directions, same as the first season. And yeah, I don't mind. Has the animation gotten better? It was it's, never bad. Yeah, it was never bad. Oh. Let's put it that way. It's it's it kept the level up. Yeah. yeah. Charlie, yeah. I'm not disappointed. I'm still enjoying it. Yes. I mean, true. Cool. I think the only thing that I mean, I'm kind of weird going into. Korra is just how long it's been since the last season, and yet I still don't think we're getting that many episodes. No, I think we're getting about ten to twelve a season. Yeah. I think, and yeah, at least at least it's continuing. Four seasons, I already know when it's ending. So I actually kind of love. Well, that. yeah, but I I realized this um, because of Comic Con. You know, Comic Con marks yeah. everything. Like we went a full Comic Con with no Korra. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty <laughs> funny. We went to one panel and then we went to another panel the year yeah. after, and they're still promoting the same thing. It's kind of yeah. interesting. Uh, no, but I, I I really enjoy the new characters. Uh, I like uh, uh, Ang's kids. I like K- Kaya and uh, and uh, I really Bumi. like the um, dynamic that they're. Oh, it's doing great there. because it shows you why Tenzin is kind of like the the serious one because the other two were the crazy ones that were more like uh, their dad. Uh, they keep picking up on each other. I kind of like that. Tenzin thinks. They all think they should have the legacy of the dad. You know, I I like where they're going with this. You get to see more of the history of it, and and you get to see more of the history of the previous show as well as Cora's uh, family history. So I, I really like where they're going. Cool. I renamed Fridays to Cora Fridays. By the way. <laughs> it's every Friday I wake up. It's Cora Friday. Cora no, day. it's Friday night clicks. No, it's not. It's Cora Friday. Cora We're day. gonna have to fight about that outside. We're so, not gonna fight. Yes. What's your Omar? What's your what's your pre uh, JLA Earth Two uh, Omar's Comic Conspiracy Book Club Pick of the Month talk? You want to talk about here the pre talk? Yeah, you just said you wanted sure. to talk about it. Well, I think it's I think it's necessary because obviously we're gonna probably get a, a you have a Bryce intro huge amount two. of questions coming in. Okay, hold on, hold on. Right. If, you have a, if you have a Bryce level intro, I need to record a whole another podcast. Definitely because it's not. Gonna be too I'm, big not to fit. I'm not Brock. I'm not. Bryce, <laughs> not Bryce. I'm not Brock, what? and I'm definitely not Bryce. <laughs> so I'm pretty. I try Jesus to keep it succinct, Christ. like Toby and Charlie. I'm on the other side of the table. Um, though I I'm give not. Brock a little credit when he did this clone thing. That was that was normal intro. He didn't do a Bryce. No, Brock has been on point as of late. I yeah. gotta say, sometimes I feel like it's like a fucking alien. Bryce had a was that <laughs> yeah. a thirty page intro? No, it Bryce must be the gluten. Repeated his the ep- lack of gluten. Intro. He got to a point where he got confused himself, and he started. <laughs> and they started over, over again. Yeah. It was like it was yeah. really bad. I guess I guess the thing that probably a lot of people are questioning themselves on is like you know when they're reading all the new you know uh, Forever Evil books is like where is the Justice League? Wait, wait. Where is the Justice League? We already That's asked that two asking. weeks ago. Well, we know they're the answer. Dead. Well, we don't or know the they? answer, but are, are they, they dead? dead? Or are they gone? They're are they here? Dead. Come are on, it's common book. I Jesus know. Christ, people. I don't know. You guys answered the question, and I thought I listened to that podcast for some reason. I don't know the answer that you guys. May have made. They're probably well, trapped we don't in know Earth the answer 3. for real. Yeah. It's found in that book. Exactly. Yeah. So read the book. Um, oh, it's the answer. You're going to probably be mind blown. You're going to probably <laughs> be mind blown. And I think that 
you know, Johns will probably give us even a more because from what I've seen so far, I don't really think it's been that gory and ridiculous. Sure, it's villains. It's a, it's a high, it's a storyline through a villain, and you see nasty shit, especially with Joker. That's disgusting. My favorite read so far of Forever Evil has definitely been uh, Two Face, Gilla March, Timo More, Peter Tomasi. Three of my favorite cre- creators ever. Connecting on books always the best. Um, yeah, but it's 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 good to see like what things are like evil every day versus good and because I, I we had this conversation actually last week was it last week right me me you and brian and uh, oh yeah we were all oh, talking about if we had heroes, actually had here yeah. if we had powers if you had powers yeah, yeah dude i'd be a good. villain dude straight up dude <laughs> i'd be fucking shit up dude i'd be actually you know what brian said about you afterwards right what? it's not like i don't think you're gonna be either you're probably going too busy picking up on women with your powers that you're <laughs> not even gonna bod rob in the bank who cares about that money's money whatever <sighs> exactly anyways that's his date because mm-hmm. he takes the girl with him to rob the bank. Oh. Why? Well, Bonnie and Clyde know. stuff, huh? I don't know. I think that we have a lot of time, though. Should we do, like, book club? Uh, what is it? Not book club. Um, Your book club random, is next ran- week. No, random pick of the month. Random pick uh, of the week. I got a few questions left, but we could do random. What? I'm fine. Instead of random picks. Random picks. Picks. When's the last time we did random pick? Do random picks. I know <laughs> next week. I thought well, it hold died. On. Six weeks ne- ago. Next week. I know we have a lot to talk about because yeah. we have the book club pick, which is JLA uh, Earth, Earth 2, Two. Yeah. by Grant Morrison and Frank Wiley. Uh, but also, uh, tomorrow night is going to be the uh, premiere pilot episode of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, sorry, that's sorry. big news. Yep. Disney's Marvel's Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents that's of huge. S.H.I.E.L.D. It is new. It is, yeah. That's is big. That, is that the official title? It's Disney's Ma- Marvel's, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is um, the title. What time does it start? Uh, TiVo o'clock. 8 o'clock. I'll be recording, That's prime time. I'll be recording yeah. the yeah. stupid geek box, stupid Ryan Scott. When is, it, they, is it two hours long? I don't know. I'm, so are you going to turn off your phone, turn off your... Oh, I'm just going to go stream and watch it. Like, I'll record the podcast. But I'm gonna be he's like, going to get a speeding ticket while he's getting home. Yeah, I'll be no, like, I'm just waiting to find out that he's going to like turn off his phone so he has no access well, to Twitter. No tons access of people to... have already seen it. I mean, I've talked yeah. to people that saw the pilot already because of Comic-Con. They showed the whole pilot there. Yeah. So I don't know if it's any different. I don't know if the aired one's going to be a little different maybe, but... Um, There'll be Are you trying to say it. that all the spoiling that could be done has already been done? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I've, I've kept... I've kept away from it. So wait, you know what's funny? Lives? <gasps> speaking of speaking of Shield, um, and and by uh, you know Joss Whedon because we're talking about Shield. Um, you guys read this? Did he actually came in and, and wrote some of uh, Thor two? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I, love it. I like that. He wrote the he like basically like he flew up the in ending. in a helicopter and shit. <laughs> he like cleaned up the ending and he wrote he like fixed up a bunch of scenes. Yeah, and like stuff three and parts. Off. Yeah, like. Dude, I I want Joss Whedon to be doing that for these movies to keep them feeling connected, you know, yeah. to have that sort of yeah. sensibility. He, he's like the, the Bendis of the movie verse. Yeah. To me, I just love the idea of somebody being able to be like, I just need to call in Joss Whedon here to fix it. <laughs> that's all. Awesome. I am here right now. <laughs> no, what you're saying right there, that's just like yeah. that's just like epic. It's like proportions. SWAT team comes yeah, down right? or something. Yeah. They're, like, they're all coming in. They're like all like Metal Gear Solid <laughs> coming in. All the soldiers. <laughs> They get to get him, get to get him in the building, write him, then they get him back on the plane and take him and they <laughs> yeah, hide hell out later. of there. That was I love that write up. I don't know where that came from, but it's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, I'm down with I'm down with random comic picks if you guys want. I don't No more questions? I mean there's a few more, but it's all good. Bring on the questions. Yeah. Bring on the questions. Okay, no more no random comic pick then. There's no um, random comic pick, it's only like not well, even. We can time totally yet. random can comic totally Yeah, do the do the questions. Sorry. Just yeah. bring, we're, we're we're getting towards the end of the podcast, but I'll read one or two more here. Um this is from Jim. Who asks, Jim Ford? Um, ha, no. Has anyone read the Injustice video game tie-in comic? Uh, yes, Charlie yes. has, and he likes it. I have. Um, Brock has, uh, and he maybe likes it. Guy <laughs> says it's a good read, and he hears it's coming back after a short break. And the comics have been coming out regularly. I don't, there hasn't been a break in the comics. Maybe the digital had a break. Um, but but the comics have been coming out pretty consistently. Mm-hmm. So, Did you I've, like it, Brock? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, have, I, I think I'm just going to grab the trade and read the first trade, because I haven't been reading it. So. Slacker! Char- I enjoyed Charlie the story. liked the book more than he liked the game story well no yeah, as you told me you go like to get the video uh, no the comic book is so I much like richer the depth they're there giving you go to yeah. the early story oh in the comic. Yeah, cause maybe the, that's what i was talking to you about because the game only you only get a little the bit game, of backstory the to game it intro is really like the story at the beginning of the game is really just it it's jarring because you're like uh, 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 and, and yeah and you're like boom this happened you're like what the 
where's the rest of the information in, in the comic book does a great and job of filling in that. the comic makes it seem so much oh, yeah. more fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going here from yeah. Mitchell, Brock's buddy nice. Mitchell. I'm sure hey, he's Mitch. on a... Sure, he's on a. No, actually, he's at home tonight. Okay, he's not on a tractor. He's on a tractor, like a pervert. Reading this, okay. Um, well, he asks if the Son of Anarchy comic is any good. I don't know if anyone That's here read question. the first issue. I read it. Did you? Any I, good? Yeah, I liked it. I thought it tied in uh, nicely with the uh, the TV show. Is the, it a tie in separate stories or is it stories? No, it's separate. It's separate stuff. Um, Do you know when it, where they go? Uh, I think this one this one goes in between see it's in between season five and six. Okay, so kind of neat. It's a it's a story. Um, it revolves around Tig, his character. So does he bounce? Does he bounce? <laughs> no, Mm-mm. Tig's one of the characters in uh, Sons of Anarchy. So no, it's I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good tie-in. Um, you know, I want to read that number, issue two. Hopefully, you at least order it for the shelf. Yeah, we got a couple. So, oh, but he also asks. Um, if he thinks more shows will have comic tie-ins, and there have been, I mean, I mean, there've always been comic tie-ins at shows, but since jo- back to Joss Whedon, um, uh, geniusly started Buffy season eight, and um, I mean, I guess Nine? comics have done this previous, but really, it was Buffy season eight was the start yeah. of let's have full-on in continuity comic books continuing canceled shows. So Buffy and Angel. Um, we've had Jericho, Jericho. We've had Smallville. Jericho might come back to TV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. And I have intro for that for next week. I keep forgetting to bring oh, it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So, I mean, there's a bunch of shows that have done this already. Um, the biggest one, and I don't want this to be the Joss Whedon cast, but they announced Firefly Season 2 uh-huh. uh, yeah. is coming out as a comic book. So, that's 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 going to be huge, yep. especially and if Whedon... Firefly comics did really well at the beginning. Yeah, especially yeah. if Whedon is, is, is actively involved in the comic like he was with Buffy. But he, he really hasn't continued the Buffy and Angel stuff. Um, and the sales reflect that. I mean, I don't they haven't been doing very good for us. But the Firefly one, especially if he writes at least the opening arc, that's, that's going to be crazy. Um, Can oh, I just request library editions now? <clears throat> yeah. X Files season eleven oh, um, yeah. has been good. Yeah. I've liked yeah. that. I've liked that a lot. Um, I've been reading that. One. I have been asking for Twin Peaks season three. Is it eleven <laughs> or is it ten? Season ten or ten? I'm oh, sorry, yeah. ten, ten, ten. Yeah. All right, um, fine. I'll request True Calling season three right now, <laughs> or two point five, or two second half of the se- second season. Okay, first they, after. first cape sort of came and went, but it was good too. It they didn't. Sort of, they didn't call it season X, but it. No, I, it picked I under- up after the Peacekeeper Wars. and Yeah, so it, I, I'm not seeing the show, but I understood it took yeah. place after the show. And so. kind of wrapped up a lot of what they had done. So it, yeah. it was kind of it's very smart. given its final season in comic form. Yeah, it's very yeah, smart. I mean, oh, well, Arrow's been doing a really good job of being in, in tying in with the, uh, the book and giving different stories. But I think the one problem that Arrow has is that it it repeats too much, I think, from the actual TV show. In the comic? Well, what's great about a show that's been canceled is that they can basically go off and do anything yeah. they want in the comic. Like, the Buffy books have been really good. Um, and, and I really like the way they've been able to take the continuity. Be like, hey, we have no budget now. We can do whatever we want. And really flushed out and gone as far as they want to. Uh, I like the cool. fact that they've also gone back to characters that hadn't been seen yep. since a lot earlier seasons yeah. and that kind yeah. of stuff. So they're also... Delving into that mythology and being able to answer some questions that would have cost them a lot more money to bring actors back and all that in the show. Now, would you like to still see a Buffy movie? You know, at this point, I don't think so. Really? Yeah. Would I wouldn't mind if I get to see a Buffy movie like even further down the road, like that the comic book continued kind of took it a little bit, and then they just do something even further down. See, I think the main problem I have is. Certain properties lend themselves to being able to go revisit 10 years later or what's uh, not really easily. You just don't want to see a buff, uh, uh, a fat Sarah Michelle Gellar, huh? I, I <laughs> am not so worried about... I am about, the vampire slayer. <laughs> I'm not so worried about the Sarah Michelle Gellar, but nom, I mean, nom, you, nom. Spike wouldn't really work at this point because he's aged too much. Um, uh. And like, I hate to say it, but I don't think Xander would really work that, like, yes, Anthony Stewart Head, I think, would be fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's aged well, and, like, it would keep with the mythology. He's like the, but, uh, he's like the uh, Patrick Stewart. Yeah. It's the British. Yeah, the British, the uh, British. green tea drinking. All right. Well, we got three more questions here. So let's 
go through these and we'll do some random The picks. answer is the British. Oh, I want Veronica I would actually season think three. You are correct. That actually is the answer to this next question. Listen to music while reading comics. Distracting or mood setting? This is from Peter Blanco. Um, and in fact, Peter? if it is the British, then it is then it is awesome <laughs> and mood setting because they make fantastic music. If it's horrible music like Toby listens to, then it's distracting. <laughs> I think it just depends on... I will stick with my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it depends on your, your preference. I mean, some people can listen to music and read at the same time, but some people can't. I don't, because it'll change my mood. I, I, Depending on what you're listening to. Yeah, I have to, I have to keep my shit clean. I am one of those people that listens to music constantly from like the minute I wake up to the minute I go to bed. With I mean, that's not entirely true. I don't really listen to music that much when I'm at home. But at work and in the car and everything like that. It's so just is like that music, really music. what's going on in your headphones right now? Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not, I just tune you guys out. But uh, but for me, music, for the most part, is always – the it's only distracting when I don't know what it is. Like, like – that is when I don't know something. That's when I get distracted. Like when I mean, you hear DJ Crush from Toby's um, playlist, you're music, like, "What? Who the fuck is that?" Because the music I've like, heard, I've heard thousands and thousands and thousands of times. It is ingrained in my subconscious, and it's just background it music. Don't change it. Like now. you're reading like some dark, like you know, fucking cable stuff of hope. <laughs> I wouldn't. The dark up op- op- world, and then fucking you got Britney Spears singing about I, I don't know, bouncing around on the couch. I, I would She's not. Not British. I would not read that book, and I do not. <laughs> listen to Britney Spears. So. <laughs> but is Willow Smith British? Because she all, does have an accent. All the music I listen to works perfectly for all the Vertigo books I read. Okay, let's just put it that way. Yeah. I listen I listen to music I, all the time. It could be cool to do a, like a, a soundtrack to a comic. Like the stuff I listen to could go with like a hundred bullets. A lot of them. Dude, straight up. Yeah. Well, like it's it's just like <laughs> fucking like anything like like you know, I, Samurai Champlo. Yeah, I mean, like the well, stuff fun. I listen to, I, I'll read a hundred bullets and be fine. But well, I can't read like Cable. And phonogram. Like, Fuck your mom. No, yeah. I'm phonogram. Phonogram was one of the more recent books that it, that really kind of did that soundtrack thing. I know um, Blue Monday, uh, Only Press comic, uh, yeah. did that a lot because of how much musical influence that book had in itself. Um, stuff like Love and Rockets has kind of done that in the past. That's um, kind of cool. So yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of comics that have still that. like here's maybe the that will be my pick of the month. I'll read one of those with music on. Well, I know that. Uh, uh, Yannicka Patrick was making music for huh? for Swamp Thing. That's cool. Oh. Like he was making his own uh, music for like mix went yeah for issues it. like for certain issues yeah, and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. No, like so, it, I mean, I actually listened to one of the tracks. It's actually well, that's really kind of cool if they have a track listing for you to uh, to listen to while you read the the book just to get the right mood. Yeah. Press play after reading this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's sick. You have to finish like all that. these pages before this song ends. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> what's it called Fraction did that a lot in uh, what's it called too. What's that book? Casanova. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Colin asks, aren't the current Spider-Man and Battle of the Atom plots in X-Men a little too similar? Is this intentional? Oh, and it actually catch up with Battle of the Atom. That's been okay. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's a little wordy. Nothing's really happening. It's a what lot of talking. I say I like timey-wimey? But it's Bendis, so. Yeah, I was going to say, when he said wordy, I'm like, is it written by Bendis? It's, it's mostly Bendis, so. I have, I'm like three issues back on Spidey, though, so I don't know. Are the plots the same? It's very timey-wimey, too. Yeah, well, well because it, you have the Spider-Man from 2099. But this is not the whole point of Age of Ultron. Like, this stuff is now yeah. happening, so I think it is intentional. Yeah. So. I love it. I love it all. Time, 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 little time... Yeah. Time flux fucks you're, it all you're, up. You're just happy because my the doctor's going to come and fix it all. I just you're want. Just I, I just want Doctor Marvel uh, crossover. I just want all this DC uh, shit to go away so we can get Booster Gold back. Uh-huh. That's what I want. <laughs> he was Man. in All Star Western for a minute. Just and you know, to facilitate the awesome story going on with Jonah Hex. Right exactly. Now. You know, I'm, I've been looking at this question. And I'm trying to think of an answer to it. and I don't know if I have one. Why don't you ask Excellent. It, ask Put it. This is from David, and we're going to say, saw David. By the way, at this point, I'm consider it. So Consider it extreme. So bad. Consider it extreme spoilers at this point because of the subject matter of what he's going to say. Uh-oh. So we will, we will. So be aware of what we're talking about here for a minute. But his Are you question is: tell us spoilers for what? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, telling yeah. us well, a no, spoiler. No, no, no. The question will make our answers be very spoilery. Okay. Um, what happens what, to Nightwing and for a real? What is our most most uh, memorable and or favorite non superhero death? i.e. Uh, Weather Last Man, Walking Dead, Fables, all of which have pretty memorable deaths in them. Yeah. Um, although, calling Fables n- non-superhero, I mean, it's not superhero, but it's... Yeah, but when it's, Blue died in that, it's got it this, was... Again, fucking preemptive spoilers. <laughs> it's I, just, got, I just ruined all of Fables for everybody. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> if you're going to spoil a book, we will be telling you what book we're going to be spoiling, except for Brock, apparently. 
Yeah. Already um, spoiled it. I thought we were going to extreme. Spo- you could say it. It was going to be an extreme spoiler. Yeah, Don't listen. Yeah, so how do I ruin it? Burst it out Wait, right so when I'm talking. What's your favorite death in a non-superhero book? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm having, a, I'm having kind of a hard time coming up with that. I mean, part of it is I just read a lot of superhero comics. But part of it is like, see, like memorable. I mean, yeah, there's been a lot. So the question, Omar, is your favorite or, and or memorable death in a non-superhero comic. However, keep in mind, this is a very, very extreme spoiler talk here. So if you're going to mention something, give us a little heads up. Unlike Brock. <laughs> non-superhero. Non-superhero? Yeah. No, go ahead. Someone will start. I just, I just fucking took a, the, mo- the best piss ever in my life. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind, of, it's like, I'm kind of coming out blank. I can't think of well, anything. Well, does it have to be a guy you like or dislike? Well, like, there is memorable, but there is memorable... There's a lot of memorable deaths in Sin City. Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. got some really good deaths in that one. Obviously, this is going to be major spoilers for Walking Dead, so if you don't, if you haven't read Walking Dead... But see, like, there's, none of these are good. These are mostly memorable, but horrible memorable. Yeah. And, and I mean... I, I can't. I don't even need to say what happens. But Walking Dead 100. If you've read it, you know. Well, Walking Dead 100. Walking Dead 100. And say Walking, non-con, non-superhero. Yeah. And Walking that's Dead uh, and the prison. The the thing with Walking Dead 100, though, to me, I think that's kind of when I went. I think I'm done. I think I have been beaten as badly as I can be beaten. So this is memorable to me, but memorable in not a good way. Yeah. To me, I think it's just like I can't take. I'm I have a difficult time taking this anymore because it's like. Ugh, like, only so much bad things can happen. You know, something like Why the Last Man ended on a bit of a different note. Yeah. Um, fables, the deaths have been, using the examples he provided, the, the deaths have been interesting, but they have ways back. Back, yeah. So, I don't, I think of fables more along the lines of, like, a superhero book, just because of the way they are. Um, but, but Walking Dead has been one of those books that just is such a difficult read, especially when you get attached to some of these characters. So... Right. Anyway, we're so gonna. I pick Scott Pilgrim when he dies. Spoiler. What? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna. We're gonna. I guess. I mean, if, if you guys got some random picks, I got nothing. I've read shit recently. What have I read? Have I read anything recently? I'll, I'll start it up. So Go for I'm it. looking right at it right now. We kind of touched on it with Superior Spider-Man: The Return of Miguel O'Hara. Uh, right now, Superior Spider-Man number seventeen. I don't have my glasses on right now. Is that seventeen? Yes. It's fucking awesome. Spider-Man f- two thousand ninety-nine. Yeah. The fact that you know he's coming in. He's dealing with like the chem cat, whatever his dad's his dad's company, trying to find himself like Back to the Future, like huh? Charlie's talking to himself. Oh, like bringing himself like Back to the Future act shit, where he's like trying to like save his dad so he doesn't go away from existence. Fighting Doc Ock, Spidey that doesn't remember him because they because Peter Parker and. 29 oh my, miguel they had an interaction before in the past and they know who each other is like uh you know aliases are and whatnot and it's just it, it, i think it's a great book i think everything about it is fucking incredible i'm so happy to be re- reading spider-man again because spider-man has like always been a, a really big book for me it's always been like as big as x-men or uh, batman so um i'm loving it i'm glad that ohara is back into the uh 616 never has been no he is now i guess so hopefully uh, we see a book come out from him, for him or some shit. That'll be awesome. I'll buy it. Good. Stegman is the man. He is. I really like him. Right. As a man can like another man, I guess. Yeah. He has nice shoulders. <laughs> he has nice shoulders. He draws really nice lines. <laughs> <laughs> nice lines. Yeah. Okay. So Charlie, you do your pick. My random pick is Rachel Ghoul number one because I love Rachel Ghoul. Therefore, that's my random pick. It's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, which one is that? Is that Batman and Robin? Forever Evil. 23.3? Which one is that? Forever Evil. It's the Villains Month book. Batman and Robin. Yes, 23.3 oh, for Batman and Robin. called it. Toby no, Go. it's Rachel Ghoul number one, and it's awesome. And it's Rachel Ghoul. <sighs> is that one of those other books that's done by that soul guy? Or They're giving no. him a lot of yeah, he, love. Uh, because, He's writing like four books. So... Just to tell a story from the Infinite Long Box, real quick. So I ran through all the villain books last night when we were recording, and I swear every single one because I tried to mention the writer and stuff. So I opened the book and saw next book and so, uh, like yeah, I did that like four or five times. This is what he's roll. been doing on his free time uh, <laughs> as he's trying to work towards his DC exclusive. I guess I don't know, but yeah, he he wrote a ton of books. 
That'll be good. And then there was some other book I picked up, like one of the indie books, and it was written by him too. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's talking Charlie. You're in the this Matrix. Is the book he's about to pick. I'm going to write it. Pick the blue or the red. I'm going to write that book too. Toby got one. Ryan, oh. Ryan's yawning as you. Don't as look you at me. Play. I got nothing. I, I really don't have anything either, even though I've been reading more than I ever have in my life in like the last past five years. Thanks to Bryce. Thanks to Omar's reading list. Thanks to uh, Bakuman ending, which I'll probably talk about maybe next week or two weeks after that. Oh, I, snap. Yeah, my well, it ended like a, a month ago or so or more. Uh, but I'm on book 19, um, so I'm looking towards uh, uh, reading that and finishing uh, Bakuman 20, which is the end. I'm gonna throw everybody the fuck off. Yeah. Um, you gonna pick a Marvel book? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's about uh, time, dude. I'm gonna have to say, uh, keep reading Thor. <laughs> the second story arc is uh, doesn't count. Uh, the art in that second story was awesome. Yeah. No, the, the yeah. second story arc with. Uh, that Jason Aaron starting up with issue thirteen, um, really good. I really enjoyed it. It was a good uh, kind of teaser intro to uh, what's going on in the Thor universe. Well, I also figure it's a good tie-in to the new. Well, not it doesn't tie into the movie, but if you're interested in the characters mm. being introduced in the second movie, their time coming out with a new story with yeah. the Dark Elves and stuff. Because I know people, a lot of people are kind of eh about the end of of the last one. Issue eleven. The you mean Ryan? Yeah, that too. Huh? <laughs> the ending of the first the first arc of Thor. I really liked it. The ending was really good. I thought the lead up to the, I thought the first story arc was really good. The second story was kind of, eh, but the final issue they 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 nailed the landing, if yeah. you will. Oh, I really liked it. And then that one shot issue right after that was really good too. Yeah. yeah. Um. No, I think Jason there has been. Doing so I haven't read Thor. this week's yet. I haven't read the most recent one now. I like the most recent one. Yeah. Same here. So it's my random pick, and I'm sticking to it. But I'm sticking with Ray Shogul. I can't believe that Trevor gave fucking JLA Earth Two only a six point five. Man, he says hashtag. He says his parentheses may. Book club he, he may hash- episode. No, I'm saying he that now. You. He hashtagged you. No, no, he didn't say hashtag. I'm <laughs> saying that now so that he says. I'm amazed oh, that he even hashtag. We weren't even we weren't even involved in the last one. So I'm saying that I'm I'm saying it now. Oh, you pre involving him Pre-empt- now? No preemptive bush strike. <laughs> so is this your way of inviting him to come be on the podcast next week to defend his? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> It's up to that guy down at the table, though. The boss? Don't ask me. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode. We're going to wrap up. Um, yeah, I have no random pick. I haven't written anything. Uh, You're on the 15s. Yeah, I am. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, you can send us emails. Or well, Actually, here, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this in some form of order? <laughs> why don't you go to geekbox.net, uh, where you can find this episode and all our previous episodes, uh, or comicsconspiracy.biz. Go on there. Go find our episodes. I'll eventually I'll post them. Um, there's all sorts of links and stuff you can click on there. It's wonderful. It's wonderful times. Uh, Charlie's giving me some weird look. Um, huh? yeah, I don't know. You're giving me some weird look there. Uh, when am can, I not giving you a weird look? You can send us emails if you want. The comic conspiracy geekbox.net. Or you can use a contact form at forums that, or on geekbox.net. You can also go to the forums, which is forums.geekbox.net. You think I've done this 124 times before? No. Um, there's a bunch of More websites. Than that. There's a bunch of websites we do. Uh, comics conspiracy is, which is uh, the Star's website, conspiratorbrock.com. That is Brock's website. Comics and the kind. That is Omar's blog and websitey blog thing. Shoot stuff. Um, and infinitelongbox.com, which is Charlie's other podcast, The Infinite Long Box. Toby. No, it's nothing. You're fine. Uh, we're on Twitter. Ryan gets Ryan. Oh, infinite <laughs> long box. Brock Sager. Brock Sager is Brock Sager. Comics and Dekine. Whole Brock. Omar. Larson Bryce is Bryce Larson. Uh, hopefully, no, Larson Bryce. Larson Bryce is Bryce Larson. Oh. Okay. Hopefully, <laughs> Bryce Larson will join us next week for the for the um, book club pick. I was here for his shit, so he should be yeah. here for mine. Toby XI is Toby. Insanity and Chaos is Charlie. Uh, don't forget our digital comic store. Newly updated. Works great with iPads, iPods, iNonsense things, iOS Apple 7? TVs, iOS. How about that? I'm assuming iOS 7. Um, all your Apple devices, all your non-Apple devices, all your Flash-based devices, all your other base devices, your PC, your, I don't know, go on your, go on your Xbox One in a couple months and go buy it on there. I'm sure you can do it. Uh, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz or comicsconspiracy.comicretailer.com Both of those will uh, give us some money whenever you buy comics or comicology. Uh, give it to us, not Apple. I think that's everything. Did you, did you advertise our 
our parent podcast and our yeah geekbox comedy button good job brain they don't need it uh the all talk podcast go listen to the all talk podcast they're good guys um and yeah i think that's make it. make sure you read jla earth 2 yep before next week omar's pick of the week or pick of the month of book the club month. thank you omar for even not though, picking something with 900 pages even though trevor gave it a 6.5 may and, and anything short of 9.5 Trevor? Uh, oh, no, nee. three thumbs up is like no thank you thank yeah. you for thank you for bringing that up maybe yeah. he's giving you um how many how many points is it it's no. 6.5 omar yeah maybe it's 6.5 um, Trevor's not Omar's. Omar's uh, count, you know, the the a Trevor points are there's not the the same freak uh, yeah. currency exchange is a little different. The currency exchange, right? Yeah. yeah. Only because I don't watch Doctor Who. That's the only reason why he's giving me less uh, points. Uh, oh, maybe. now I have to also, give you less points. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Also, I hope everyone watches Agents of Shield, and when we get to talk about it. Yeah, 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 big spoilers next week for Agents of Shield, obviously. So um, watch those. I don't know why you wouldn't. All right, we'll talk to everyone next week. Also, Machete too.